Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig, Cam, and Paula, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey folks, and hey, how we doing? It's Craig here from Tiki Central Canada, and I'll be your bartender, your mixologist, and host of the hour. And uh, we want to welcome Evan back to the New Year. It's our first show Happy of the New year. year. Hey, there Happy you go. New Year, everyone. Ah, there you go. So Cam is here. Hi, everyone. And how was your year? How was your New Year and your Christmas? New Year was uh, was great. I, I may still be slightly under the influence. Uh, it's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> uh, Christmas was lovely. Uh, went home, saw my mom, my brother, my nephews. Uh, and, yeah, had a wholesome Christmas. And then uh, a week of debauchery uh, for New Year's, so... And also, too, you told me today we're talking about it today. You kind of almost taken almost a full month of January, like not drinking. Well, very little drinking anyway. Right? Well, you cut down your... yeah, I, I've stopped mostly drinking beer uh, with with tonight excluded. Um, <laughs> you uh, couldn't exclude tonight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I uh, I figured it was time to, you know, just uh, kind of get myself in fight and shape for uh, for the rest of the year. So there we go. I know a lot Less of people beer, actually, fewer carbs and yeah. uh, and saving a hell of a lot of money. I imagine uh, I know a lot of people actually January February they take it like they go dry. Yeah, yeah I mean I'm yeah. not let let's not go crazy. Well, let's not, yeah, but, let's not go crazy. Yeah. But you know what I mean, like yeah. yeah. And Mark, hey, since we're doing Mark Adventures today, Mark is here. Hey, how's everybody going? So you've been you've been gone for quite a long time from the show. Yeah, like from the show, we're doing some family stuff, and mm-hmm. then a cruise to the Caribbean. Oh. I, think, I think this is actually our first show together. Yes, it is. Yeah, congratulations. Hey, 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 Toast, toast. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so you did a cruise. Yes. And then also, too, you spent some time in uh, the southern part of the States. Yes, we have Fort Lauderdale before and after. Oh, hmm. jealous. That's where, yeah. I, that's where I happened to go to the tiki bar we're talking about today. So what bar are we talking about today for later on in the show? At Isotico from Miami Beach. Oh, Miami Isotico. Beach. Or, uh, my, actually, just Miami. Just Miami. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Isn't Miami just a beach in general anyway? I don't know. There's so many beaches down there. There's some, like, something beach, something beach, something beach. Yeah. Right? It's, so right. it's all beach. Kind of smear into yeah. each other at some exactly. point. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And as you guys notice, there's one voice that is missing. That's Paula. She's still in Brazil. <sighs> and if you're listening, we're very jealous. <laughs> yeah, but it's sort of jealous tinged with relief. You know? Oh, man. This, they, <laughs> they just love each other. It's a love-hate relationship there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah, so I also want to mention that our contest will be the finishing at the end of January. So we'll announce a winner to that. So what and contest is that? So it's the same one we usually have all the time, which is $25 gift card. So, yes, please do uh, go in there and get your points. Uh, there's different points. So for following us on Twitter or retweeting us, on Facebook, liking the page or uh, liking the posts or sharing the post. So there's different ways you can do it and you get mm-hmm. different points for different things. Can we win? And we can't win. No, mm-hmm. we're not eligible mm-hmm. to the contest. I'm sad now. <laughs> I won. Well, Yay! No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we'll be hanging on any gift certificates today. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> so, Happy birthday to, to me. me. Yeah. Um, okay, but enough of this deli dallying. Uh, what tasty beverage are we uh, looking at today? Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about prohibition. So this is actually going to be part one of a two-part series on mm-hmm. prohibition. And the reason why we're doing that is because it's actually the hundredth anniversary of prohibition. Actually, this week, mm-hmm. so a hundred years exactly mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. And so the drink we're doing is called the Mary Pickford cocktail. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mary Pickford. Yes. Interesting. Now, before I get to that, though. Yes. Prohibition. Yes. I'm vaguely aware of what it was uh, in terms of, you, you know, alcohol being banned in the States, basically. Yeah, this is some weird concoction or something, I'm, I'm eh? pretty sure I saw an episode of The Simpsons about it. Um, <laughs> but could, could you maybe give a little bit more detail on it? Yeah, elaborate, sure. Yeah. So uh, what it was is that back in 1920s, well, actually 1920 exactly, the USA had a nationwide constitution ban on the production, importation, transportation, and sale of alcohol beverages from 1920. Now, this went all the way through to 1933. Man, just after the end of World War One. 
Yeah, exactly. That's suck. Yeah, just, yeah. This is me. Welcome yeah. back to the war. Exactly. You get yeah. nothing in return. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, sorry, folks. I no drink to forget. For you. you know. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure the soldiers came back. Like, what was I fighting for? Yeah. So <laughs> 1920 to 33. That's actually longer than I thought it was. I kind of assumed it was just a couple of years before sanity reasserted itself. But um, prohibition was exclusively an American thing, or did did we have anything like that up uh, in the Great White North? Yeah. So we did have it for a brief little time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, so, for my research, it was 1918 to 1920, but I mean, Mark, you also said you did some research on this as well. Yeah, a number of the provinces would continue it, like Alberta mm. uh, would continue prohibition for a number of years. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they've also banned rats, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Damn those guys, no rodents here. Yeah, so, can, yeah, so, but Ontario and Quebec were the ones that actually, they cut it pretty quick. Yeah, right? but what they did do, though, was... Smart or slimy. Mm -hmm. You choose. Uh, it was still legal to manufacture and export alcohol. That's right. All you Brilliant. needed was an export permit. Right. Exactly. So Ontario and Quebec took advantage of, like, hey, these guys in the States want our whiskey. Yeah. No problem. We'll sell it to you. So basically, we made a profit from the, the prohibition actually ourselves. Yeah. Yes. What they would do is uh, they'd get an export license to go to Venezuela. Wow, uh, that's, that's, a, that's right? a bit of a trek. Because you couldn't really States. send it to the States because there was prohibition. Oh, of course, of course. Right? So yeah. they just go into the clerk's office. I need this stamped to Venezuela, wink, wink. please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's a case for the wife. And uh, they would just take the boat across the lake and unload it. Oh, hilarious, right? Yeah. And of course, and in the States, they'd be like, oh, well, this is Venezuela. And then it, it continues <laughs> to be allowed. Ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> Oh, well, well there, where there's a will, there's a way. That's right. Oh. So it, it's a bit interesting, though, that uh, at least like in terms of your research, like like the American uh, experience started just as the Canadian experience was waning. So, you know, kind of <laughs> Canadian went, whoa, this is uh, this is a bad this idea. Is way too eh? profitable for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're making too much money here, boys. And, uh, and then the Americans uh, prohibited it. Quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing was, like, it wasn't against the law, like as Mark said, it wasn't against the law to export it. Right. So yeah. if we were caught, let's say there's a transition between Canada and the States, mm -hmm. and the law enforcement's got involved, we were charged because we're just exporting it. We're yeah, not, yeah, I'm just selling. We're not, yeah, we're just not. Just a dealer. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not a user. Jeez, guys. Isn't that funny? Yeah. In this scenario like this, the dealer actually gets yeah. to walk away. Like, all right. Yeah. See you later, guys. Hope you enjoy jail. You know, it's an interesting little little evolution of, of our uh, punitary system. <laughs> um, but now back to Mary Pickford, because that's the yes. name of the drink, right? That's right, the drink that we did today. And you guys actually drank that one. How would you guys think of that? That was the, like... The uh, first one like, in the coupe glass. Yeah, it's, yeah. Kind of, it's, it's, almost, it's kind of pinkish or like a peach color almost. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very delicate. It was like a daiquiri. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you can see from the recipe, when we get to it, actually, it's pretty close to, like, a, it's just a modification of a daiquiri. It's what it really is. Hmm. Exactly. So Mary Pickford actually was a Canadian-born actress, also that uh, basically worked down in the States as a film actress and a producer. Her real name actually is Gladys Smith, and she was born in 1892 and died in 1979, and she was actually born in, on, sorry, Toronto, Ontario. So Canadian-born, mm. but also to hear some other cool facts about her. So she was a co-founder of the Pickford Fairbank Studio. Mm -hmm. This actually was developed by also with her and Douglas Fairbanks. That name rings a bell. Yep. yep. And uh, later on, it actually became the United Artists Film Studio. Okay. So, if you remember back in the 80s and 90s, I think, more yeah. we saw that, the UA logo. Yeah, it was a really cool logo. It was sort of like three-dimensional, like it's, and it's kind of rotated when they sh when when you saw exactly. it. Exactly. I don't think I've yeah. seen it in a long time now, though. So, maybe it's something else now. Maybe it's been transformed into something it's, else. Yeah, it's been bought out by somebody. Yeah, something. exactly. Probably yeah. Sony. Probably or, Sony, or yeah, Disney. probably. Or Disney. Yeah, or yeah. Disney, one of the two. <laughs> Fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. So United Arts Film Studio actually is created by her, Fairbanks, and Charlie Chaplin. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah, okay. There's a big name. Yeah, Charlie that's pretty Chaplin. significant Hollywood royalty then. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, she was known as America's Sweetheart. Uh, oh, isn't that sweet? Big old go. Canadian gal. Yeah. Not the first nor the last. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have so many people that are born in Canada and then they go down to the States and we get their fame. Yeah, but I mean, you know I, mean? I mean, granted, there's only like six people that live in Canada. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Besides us. Yeah. Norma's one of them. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Anyway, so here's another cool fact. Actually, she was part of the original 36 founders of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. Oh, wow. That now presents on a yearly basis the Oscar Awards. Wow. 
So, yeah, no, I mean, she yeah. was a real heavy hitter. Well, and you said a producer, too, and for a woman to be a producer back, back in the then, days, that's a I mean, thing. even now, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah. challenging. So, wow, quite quite an impressive individual. Yeah, very cool indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if I could just sort of circle back here to yeah. what this podcast is actually about. Oh, we're not talking about American history? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the drink come from? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the origin of the drink. So this drink created for her back in the 1920s by Eddie Volk and Freddie Kaufman in, at the Hotel National de Cuba on mm. a trip that she took in Havana with Charlie Chaplin and Douglas Fairbanks. So it was actually made... Specifically in, for her. Like in her honor. Yeah. Oh, it's reminiscent of uh, the delicious Australian uh, dessert Pavlova. And it's a little trip that she did, was like I said, with Charlie Chaplin and, and Douglas Fairbanks. Hmm. They were mm-hmm. all on the trip, kind of like, hey, let's go down to Cuba and have some, have a good time, right? So I definitely know who Charlie Chaplin was. Yes. I now know who Mary Pickford was. Yes. Douglas Fairbanks rings a bell, but I I don't really, uh, other than the name, I can't really yeah, place so him other than sort of Hollywood guy. Yeah, so let's break him down. So actually, he is an American actor, screenwriter, director, and producer. <laughs> That's a lot, I know. Uh, he was also married to Mary Pickford. Hmm. So Mary Pickford's husband. Hmm. Uh, the couple actually was known as the ho- ho- famous Hollywood couple. So you know how we had Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were kind of like the couple of Hollywood? Right. right. These guys back then, 1920s, that was it. They were like the, wow. the Hollywood couple. Wow. Right? Uh, but he's also best known for his roles in silent films, which included The Thief of Baghdad, Robin Hood, which we all kind of know, mm-hmm. and The Mark of Zorro. The Mark of Zorro. You know, Zorro. Yeah. That's the movie that... That's before Antonio Banderas. Mm. That was the movie that the Waynes were seeing when they got shot. No way. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. 1939, so. Uh, but once again, I'd like to circle back to um, w- w- what the hell's in this drink. Okay, so you guys had this drink and you, like we talked about it. It was very tasty. And, yes. And... and, and uh, Gentle, like it wasn't. Uh, it was, was it overpowering? It yeah. wasn't uh, super tart, super sweet. It's kind of down in the middle, right? Subtle, yeah, yeah. And it was like not a, a you drink it back and swish it back. It was like no, it was a, a sip and yeah, sip and drink, sip and drink for exactly. sure. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So on this recipe, we're going to use one and a half ounces of white rum. And by the way, I want to mention, by the way, over Christmas holidays, uh, I got a little bit of an extra Christmas gift. And what it was is that Vicky, who's my sister-in-law. Took a picture of all these rums that she got from friends and family that have gone down to the Caribbean and brought it back for her, but she doesn't drink rum. So there was like two forties of Havana Club white rum, a twenty sixer of Havana Club uh, white rum, a twenty sixer of one fifty one proof rum, wow. and some other stuff in there. And I'm like, oh my god! And like, Merry, Merry, happy birthday to me! Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm like, thank you for thank you for the donation. Yeah. Holy smokes! Yeah, so anyways, I just, I just thought I'd bring that up. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, so one and a half ounces of white rum, and we did actually use Cuban rum today. Uh, one and a half ounces of pineapple juice. Again with the pineapple. I know, a mm. teaspoon of grenadine, mm. uh, and six drops of maraschino liqueur. Now, in the original recipe, it said six drops of maraschino cherry juice, like from a jar. Mm. Uh, but then, then I did my research, and more and more of these recipes were actually were aiming towards more a liqueur than an actually just the juice of a... Right. And it's up to you. I mean, if you don't want to be as boozy, you can just right. add just some, right. you know, some of the drops and the maraschino cherries there. Hmm. For sure. So pineapple comes up again. It comes up all the time. It, it like, I mean, it seems like pineapple it is kind of... Here. Holy yeah. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like kind of the, the, the silver bullet of... Uh, of, uh, of tiki. Tiki, yeah. Yeah, well, it is. It's, it's very tropical, of course. So, I mean, you go yeah. down these, any of these islands, there's pineapples everywhere, right? Yeah. Uh, but also, too, is the pineapple juice, the great thing about it when it comes to a cocktail perspective is when you shake it, and you notice it when I actually was making this drink, it actually adds a lot of froth and a lot of body to it. Yeah. So yeah. So pineapple juice, when you when you shake it, it froths up and adds more body to the drink, and that's well, one of the reasons I like using it. And I guess I guess if you're trying to avoid using egg whites, it can be a useful sort of exactly. partial substitute. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not sure it gets like as permanently frothy. But, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I know when when we talked about the egg white on one of our episodes there. Paula was kind of screwish about it, and some mm-hmm. people will. I mean, mm-hmm. I've actually had customers, you know, kind of like, what? Is egg white in that? Huh? Mm-hmm. If you don't want egg white in there, just add a little bit of pineapple juice and f- shake it up, and then, therefore, it'll, it'll froth it up a little mm-hmm. bit there for sure. Um, so, I mean, th- th- that leads to my next question. of a Very good question. So, what we're going to do is actually going to shake this and then double strain it into a coupe glass. Okay. So, the coupe glass is like that small little round... F- about four to six ounces, a mm-hmm. uh, little glass. Usually you'll see, like, you know, used for like things like champagne, daiquiris. And here's a tip. Keep a couple of coupe glasses in the freezer at all times. Chilled, yes. Chilled glasses. I know when I watch all these videos for making cocktails, all these guys have a chilled coupe glass chiller. Yeah. Like, they have a fridge. Yeah. Dedicated solely to, 
I mean, must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Um, you mentioned double strained. Yes. Um, two questions. Yep. What is that and why? And so what it is is when we double strain is that when you shake that up in your shaker and you go to strain it, you're going to use a regular Hawthorne strainer, which is the one that goes on top of the shaker. You mm -hmm. see it all the time. Sure. Yeah. And go. it's sort of like a cylinder, uh, it's like got a, a coil, cylinder. It's got like a spring coil to it. Yeah. You put that inside your shaker and then you strain it that way. But also too, we're going to use like what's called a little tea bag strainer or like a fine uh -huh. strainer. <laughs> tea bag. <laughs> Cam... What? Oh, what? man. What? Can, what? Can't smile goes from ear to ear out of nowhere. I don't know why. <laughs> By the way, okay, so I have to tell this funny story. So my son, and I'm, I don't, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen this, because in, in, you play video games, right? Yeah. And yeah. Do you play video games? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So my son, this is back when he was probably like, I think, 10, 11 years old. And it's one of those shooting games where, you know, like army shooting games, and you go and shoot, find people and you shoot them and whatever. So I walk into the room, and my son's character is squatting up and down hmm. on his guy. Yeah, he's teabagging him. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, well, yeah, that's what you do when you kill someone, and you teabag them. And I'm like, what? He's like 10 years old. And he goes, oh, yeah. That, I'm like, so, of course, I'm concerned. Like, do you know what that means? He goes, well, yeah. When you shoot someone, you just jump up and down on them. That's all you do. And I'm like... <laughs> Thank God, that's all he thinks it is. Yeah, yeah. Save, save that Jeez. conversation. Save that for conversation a for a later yeah. year. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, so yeah. Back to the original question. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so the Hawthorne strainer and then the t the the tea bag strainer, the fine strainer. Mm -hmm. Um, and what that's going to do is actually going to pick up any ice particles from the shaking. Because when you shake, you're going to break that ice apart. Of course. Yeah. Right. So you don't yeah. want any ice particles in there because it's going into a coupe glass. You want it to be a nice, fine, just liquid only. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's going to get you. The like a nice, fine, no ice particles or any other particles. Right. Usually we use a double strainer when we're doing things like mint or raspberries or strawberries, something solid. And you don't want those parts to get into the drink. Right. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Mark's Adventures. So we want to welcome back Mark. Obviously, Mark's been gone for Hi, quite Mark. a while here. Hey, Cam, how are you doing? Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Hey, Mark, yeah, yeah. We're doing great. And uh, so Mark's been gone for quite a few months. I think it was November the last time you were here. On in between now and then, though, you've gone to quite a few travels. Other than Niagara Falls, we obviously won't talk, talk about that. But I mean, you've gone through quite a few travels to different parts of well, we uh, went on states a, and stuff. We went on a wee cruise, but they uh, managed to squeeze in uh, three different tiki bars during that time, hmm. and uh, one in uh, Miami, and of course. The Mai Kai in Fort Lauderdale, which we'll have a full episode on one day. Oh, there you go. And um, went to this uh, nice little cheesy place in uh, Key West called the Tiki House. Mm. Tiki House. You, hmm. you may avoid the Tiki House. Uh, okay, really? so this is why it's not oh, going to be on the show. It's a nice dive. <laughs> it's a nice dive bar, right? With a thatched roof on the outside, right. or a thatched awning. I shouldn't even mm. say roof. Yeah. But, yeah. So the accoutrements of Tiki, but without the actual soul of Tiki. That is correct. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what uh, bar are we talking about today again? Uh, the bar we're talking about is Isotico, E-S-O-T-I-C-O. -E oh, there we go. Spelling bee. Yep. Can you imagine that? <laughs> All right, Tommy, spell Exotico. <laughs> go. E-X. <laughs> Can you yeah. use it in a sentence? I went to Exotico I yesterday. I got shit-faced at Exotico. Exotico. <laughs> I had a tiki bowl at Esotico. E S O T I C O. Oh my God! Yeah. Tom's like, well, I've never, I don't drink, so I don't know yes. what to do. <laughs> uh, right. So where, where exactly is this place? And tell us a little bit of now. Just to break into it. Also, another question here. So the first place, where is it located? And tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. But you also mentioned uh, when me and you talked about it that one of the bartenders actually was nominated for the Tales of the Cocktail International Bartender of the Year. So let's yeah. let's just break this all let's down. Break it all down. Where is it at? Okay, first of all, it's in Miami. Hmm. That's a good place uh, to be. Right? It, and let me see if I get the exact uh, location here. GPS. It is, <laughs> it, it's about a 10-minute walk to the water at Margaret Place if it, Park, if anybody knows where that is. And about a 30-minute walk right to downtown Miami. So the, hmm. the big art deco area, it's only a 30-minute walk from there. It's wow. great. Wow. Nice. Great. And it's uh, Asatico is the latest operation of Italian Daniela Dallapolo. I'm using my we'll talk with my hands and the whole bit. We're there. doing no, audio no. here. Mark's yeah. got his hands out like yeah, an Italian, right. like, hey. That's right. uh. You have to, if you hold my hand now, I'd stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for a little background, Daniela was the winner of the below, uh, 42 Below is a vodka company out of New Zealand. Pretty high-end vodka, and they have an annual competition, or had one, it's back again. Yeah. And world champion. Oh, wow. Finals. So he's internationally mm -hmm. known. And he won. Wow. And oh, he used smoke. pineapple. 
Hey, see? I tell you guys, I think I'm on to something. I need a trench coat and a fedora and a notebook, and I'm going (laughs) to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but then you also said too he was a nominated. He nominated uh, Tales of the Cocktail. He was nominated yes. as International Bartender of the Year, and you know about. Uh, oh, so Tales of the Cocktail. What it is is a, an event that happens in New Orleans every year, and what it is is a gathering of about ten to twenty thousand bartenders from around the world, including bartender owners, uh, spirit branding people, like brand uh, representatives and stuff. And so they also have kind of like their Oscars of bartenders and mm. bar uh, bar clubs. It's very cool. So it's one of the things that's on my bucket list i'm definitely want to go for sure hmm. yeah. yeah well daniel approaches his cocktails from the tropical side yes with numerous citruses infusions and syrups his bar in bologna italy is called the new lounge in you and it's it doesn't have an umlaut on it no but it should but it's, it's italian should. they don't have ah, okay fair enough fair <laughs> right? yeah that's it's more okay. scandinavian yeah, 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 yeah you gotta yeah, go north for that yeah and play metal I, yeah, oh boy, ah, nice yeah. there you go yeah <laughs> And the, it was less than the top 100 of drinks international list and got an award as the best rum bar in Italy. And he, Daniela even created his own line of infused syrups. Wow. Nice. Yeah, yeah really bet, cool stuff. That they do very well. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So what's the, what are some of the great cocktails that you saw there? What are some of the great cocktails you saw? Well, the drinks are numerous and colorful. There's like smoke and all kinds of great stuff. Lots of... Lots of Big dry, time mixologist, in other words. Yeah, so, yeah. dry ice and the whole bed. It's mm. really cool. Wow, presentation is everything, right? Oh, yeah. Cool mugs. The he's got this great Elvis mug. Yeah, and it's Elvis with Maori drawings on it. Oh wow! Yeah, and then he went one thing further. He got the Santa Elvis Maori. Oh mug. no! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Worlds are colliding. <laughs> oh, I know it's, it's yeah. cr- crazy See, time. Elvis still lives. Oh. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So um, peanut butter pork chop. Yeah. Banana here sandwich. Here we go. Here we go. Here. <laughs> Yeah, lots of rum, as you can imagine. There's several oh, cocktails to use uh, tequila, gin, and vodka. Mm. So my, my all, favorite. Like, th- all in the same drink. Sometimes, yes. Wow. Yeah. Like, wow. What a variety, eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so it was like very cool. Uh, one of my favorite was Tangarora's Butt. <laughs> okay. Is there a glassware to this? I want to know. Yes, there is. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, it's <laughs> great. It's just orange and you kind of see through the butt. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, see through the butt? Well, it's like it can really only fit mm. one straw. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> The glass is thinner at the back, kind of thing. Of course it is. Of course it is. Right. And it consists of mezcal. Oh, cool. uh, Ray and Nephew overproof rum. Hmm. And Mount Gay black barrel rum. Oh. And pineapple and a couple other ingredients. And there's the pineapple. Yeah. There's the pineapple. There you go. Yeah. We also able to taste a couple of other cocktails on the menu. So I went through some of the stuff you're not going to get elsewhere. Mark, I know you. You run through an entire menu. Well, when we have time. <laughs> there was no, a, I'm just saying when you when you go to these bars, you're like, I'll have one of each. Just yeah. line them up, and I'll take them all. We'll start here and go down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Start on the left, go down. Right. Unless it has actually is classified as strong, weak, yeah, yeah. whatever. You yeah. just start strong and work up. Work up. Well, of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's like weightlifting. You know, it's yeah. like if 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 you're working on you know bulking up, you start with the heavy weights, and then as you work start your way down your to strength, the you stuff. go with the lighter <laughs> and lighter weights. It's uh, it's a proven system. So wait, wait, is it the same thing as that? Where are you? Can you start with one really strong drink, but then when you get to the weak drinks, you're like, okay, we'll have 10 of these, please. No. Okay. <laughs> I saw a hesitation there for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say no. Yeah. No one. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what was the other one I had was uh, the El Tiquiero. Uh, Good thing te- you're pronouncing that. Uh, tequila. Yep. Mezcal. Ice. Pineapple. There we go. All spiced ram and a secret blue agave. Oh, yeah. nice. And another one was. He has this, uh, his renowned sexy colada, I suppose, of the pina colada. Sexy colada. Mm. Uh, with uh, Bacardi Carta Ora, it's a gold. Mm. Uh, yep. Uh, cream of coconut, pineapple juice, coconut water, and a little bit of ginger. Oh, so coconut and ginger. That's an interesting combination. So yeah. you get a bit of a kick. But then the coconut so- smooths it out. Kind yeah. Of. yeah, yeah. Very cool. Oh. Very nice. Especially coconut water, because coconut water, what it is, is almost refreshing. Like yeah. It kind of rejuvenates yeah, it's like invigorating. you, right? invigorating. Yeah, it's like, it's like nature's you. Gatorade. And the bar also has a rum club. Oh, yeah, oh, see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's good to actually, like, so example, Smuggler's Cove, we've talked about quite a few times on the show. He actually has a rum club, and what it is is that he has over 500 rums, I think, from around the world. 
And so when you go to a bar that has a rum club, you know that there's going to be a lot of different uh, variations of rum in there. Sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, but, but I mean, how does a rum club work? Is, is it like they, they essentially keep like a rum, pardon the Hunter Thompson reference here, but a rum diary for, for club members yes. when they come in? Okay. You get like a little book yeah. or a pamphlet yeah, 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 or whatever, yeah, okay. and you just check it off that I've had such and such, such right. and such. Yeah. And like, so, so like all the, the rums that are in that place okay. will be listed, right. and then you get a chance to try one of those out like once a week or once a month sure. or something, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then you give your obviously your evaluation and what you think about it and yeah they'll like sometimes they'll give you samples even so nice. free yeah hey. yeah ontario does not have any rum clubs <laughs> no we don't have any rum clubs you can't do any way free booze yeah, yeah. buggers yeah. anyway it's very tropical inside yeah inside and outside it's pretty amazing hmm. and, and we're definitely gonna put pictures on the, on your site for that one yes yeah. now he also is very much loves his pineapple i guess so. very much so and I actually had the pleasure of taking a pineapple class with him a few years ago at a tiki event. <laughs> it's completely nuts. This guy's right over the top. It's amazing. It's like a multiple so, choice test at the end. They got a cantaloupe, a honeydew, and a pineapple. And they're like, identify right. the pineapple. That's right. Identify yeah, the yeah, pineapple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the one with the rum in it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, okay. There we go, yeah. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, what else do they do in the pineapple course? I mean, what, what's... Well, he, first he taught you actually how to open a pineapple. Okay, well, I can, right. I can see that can be complicated, right, yeah, you know, for just, sure. But, you know, how to core it and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then how to top it off. Then you use these things for garnish. And then yeah. and then you start using pineapple juice for this and pineapple juice for that. Using the coring to make more pulp, to make more thickener. Oh, okay, you know, okay. Kind of Interesting, okay. And, and you're actually, like, uh, it's, you, it's, you, 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 in, you, you sort of indicated, like, in the pineapple shell, I realize yeah. that's not the right word, but... but that's the mug. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. You core it out and that's your mug. Actually, I did that. I've for, done that, actually. Where I've done not, frozen. Not. No, no, for sure. Yeah. I did that for the kids in our street for Canada a few years ago. You yeah. see, just as the people of the north use all the caribou, <laughs> the people of the tropics <laughs> they use all the pineapple. That they can. Yeah. We waste yeah. nothing here. So I, I, I've actually, I've got a question. Um, Go for it. That, that, that's a little tangential. But you, you mentioned that one of the drinks is tequila and mezcal. Yeah. And I've, I've had both, more tequila than mezcal, but I've never really been able, at least in terms of flavor profile, to make a big distinction between the two, other than maybe tequila is slightly smokier. Ah, um, so we did a show on that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what it was, that's exactly you were, it. You weren't oh, here. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. what it is, is that mezcal actually is made from the blue agave plant only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, usually has smoke. You're right. It's smokier and sweeter actually than tequila. Tequila can made up with can be made up from 26 different agave plants. It's oh, a mixture. Okay. Um, also, too, you okay. mentioned too when we did the show was that tequila actually has to be made in tequila, Mexico, apparently. Like, uh, rumba. Okay. Yeah. So it's a bit like champagne or, or yeah. yeah, scotch. Yeah. yeah sure. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I learned something today. There we go. <laughs> hey. So what about the food? What's the, the oh, food yeah. like? The food is like it's very international. Uh, the chef is an amazing guy back there. He's a happy guy. Amazing. Uh, oh, but yeah. He's in the Caribbean. Hello. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the coolest things we had was the octopus hot dog. Okay. Okay. You have to explain this now. Okay. Like, <laughs> you've gone to get octopus here. It's usually little, little tiny tentacles. Mm -hmm. Right. But this was a big, like, 18-inch barrage bun, right? Wow. Barrage okay. bun mm -hmm. with one humongous tentacle. octopus tentacle in there Jeez. as the sausage. No way. Yeah. And it was served with a um, mezcal cucumber relish. And wow. a sriracha mayo. So is it spicy? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. Now, you oh, said, I mean, delicious. you've had a conversation. You've actually had octopus, right, Cam? Yeah, no, on numerous occasions, Asian, actually. Yeah, but, but but largely within an Asian context. Right. Uh, mostly Japanese. Uh, yeah, no, an octopus is, is very tasty. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to have it every day. Right. Um, but... The, the thing I've always found interesting with octopus and, and squid for that matter is the texture because mm -hmm. when you bite into it, it's almost like you're, it's, it's almost like a grape. Right. Okay. So there's like a hard like, shell. And well, it's well soft yeah, middle. yeah. Like, like there's more resistance when you first bite into it. And then there's kind of a, a like the resistance releases There's a bit of a pop and then your teeth really sink into it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, like I've had like, like fried octopus is, uh, wow. Yeah, it's an exceptional. No, no, I haven't. I have if yet to have it, so I guess it's on my list of things to do. I guess. All right. Well, I'll have to check this out when I'm down there for sure. There you go. Everybody should go to his article. There you go. Mm -hmm. So there's another bar that uh, it's on Mark's Adventures, and thank you, Mark, for doing all the research. I, yeah. in quotations, you notice I put research. Yeah. Well, well, it's 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 tough. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, the, the thing, it's field research. Yeah, the things I do for you is just I know. It, it's yeah. beyond belief. I sent him on his merry way, and he comes back with like five bars. I'm like, dude, I told you one bar, and he's like, well, I went to five. Yeah. So, um, 
I got shows for the next year for you there. Uh, yeah. You were supposed to be researching cars I could buy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I did, I did not. not. Oh, hey, Unison. Okay. Stereo. Yeah. So let's uh, actually talk about some cool facts about Prohibition since it is the, the 100th anniversary uh, in this year. So, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Craig, <laughs> but so what was it like the first time around? Uh, I mean, you were there. So. I was there, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, etching things on tablets. Ching, 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 ching. Okay, okay. The oh, Ten Commandments. Yeah. I come bearing the Ten Commandments. Hmm. <laughs> Anyone ever seen History of the World, Mel Brooks? Come on, we've all seen History of the World, right? No? Yes. History of the yes. World? History of the World? Yes. This is the part where he's Moses. I, I come bearing the Ten Commandments, and then one falls down. All right, uh, the, nine the Nine Commandments. commandments. <laughs> I was really looking forward to its sequel, Jews in Space, but uh, it never came out. <laughs> No, no, then they brought out Spaceballs. You know? Oh, like, and that was a beautiful... But then Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money, never came out. I know. So I guess they ran out of I, money. I feel like that Mel Brooks has been uh, teasing us. <laughs> the entire time. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's go on some, some uh, cool facts about Prohibition. So Prohibition is actually started by two major groups. So the first group is actually called the Anti-Saloon League, or the ASL. Mm. And uh, its leader is Wayne Wheeler. And so he actually had quite the experience about alcohol when he was a young boy. Mm. On his farm, a helping hand on the farm uh, stabbed him in his leg with a pitchfork by accident. Being while he was being, obviously the, the helping hand was drunk, inebriated. Wow! Stabbed him in his leg with a pitchfork by accident. So yeah, of course, I from there on in, that, uh, yeah, from there yeah. on in, he was like, I don't like alcohol, and I want to have nothing to do with it. Mm. Uh, the other major group from that is the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Hmm. Which was led by Francis Willard and Carrie Nation. Uh, Carrie now, Nation. Yeah. Mm. Now Carrie Nation has quite the quite the characteristic stuff about her. First of all, her hus first husband dies of alcoholism. Mm. Her second husband ends up in jail being drunk in public. Mm. But also, too, she would do is go into bars with rocks in her pockets and throw the rocks and break all the liquor bottles in the bar. And make them scatter and basically empty out the bar. You sure she wasn't just looking for a third husband? That's it. <laughs> Damn you guys! No one likes me! Well, I mean, she seemed to have a type. <laughs> no, but get this. So the rocks didn't do it for her. So she's like, you know what? Let's uh, step up the game here. Hmm. Hatchet. She would go in with a hatchet. <laughs> oh my god, anger issue. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, now, now, I think I've actually seen um, a picture uh, of this lady. Photos of this lady. Yeah. She is a stern looking woman. Oh, yeah. Glasses. Like, 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 like well, like, like grandma. Like, I, I, I saw her, yeah, like, like with her arms crossed in a very kind of. Uh, matronly I guess the right word would be like outfit yeah. with with sort of a bouffant thing on her head but yeah she didn't look like she would take any crap so let's go through some facts about Tough these guys lady. yeah so the anti-saloon league their campaign was more towards political and yeah. what it was that people example like Henry Ford so Henry Ford was building obviously model T's back then yep. and had a factory that had the assembly line the America's first most assembly line famous right? Nazi sympathizer yes oh. go on <laughs> Anyway, so because, he didn't, he didn't, look it up, people. He didn't okay. sympathize at all. No, <laughs> no, no, exactly. yeah. Well put. Yeah. Exactly. So what it was, because he had the assembly line, there was a lot of uh, tools and things that they use on this assembly line, and the assembly line itself was kind of dangerous. He was concerned that his employees were getting drunk and then coming back to work and working on the assembly line, so he didn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So he actually hired almost all of his employees were actually married with kids, mm -hmm. uh, the husbands that he okay, hired. Yeah, yeah. But also, too, uh, what ended up happening is that unions. So me and you, example, let's say we worked in Alberta and we worked in a coal mine. Mm -hmm. And then we get off work and we go to the tavern. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the conditions down there and maybe the, you know, the case of the black lung and our pay is you know, <laughs> not the greatest. <laughs> well, Cam's already got it already. So that's a little Zoolander deep. What, what ended up happening was that uh, that actually recognized. caused. Uh, so then what ended up happening in the taverns is that that, that cough was pretty deep for a twelve-year-old. Hey, <laughs> you sure it's not that Muskoka over there? You know, <laughs> I'm not drinking beer this month. No, yeah, that's right. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. This is a bar uh, barley sandwich, if ever I seen one. That's right. Mm. So what ended up happening was that unions would be formed in taverns. Hmm. So, of course, that's another reason why the ASL was not exactly, um, you know, happy about alcohol being involved right. and taverns right. being involved. So Lord knows workers' rights. Is, so, you know, is exactly. Not, Heaven forbid we have rights. Sounds anti-American. So the ASL would actually Anglo force... Saxon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. would actually force the politicians to agree and join them so then they wouldn't lose the election. So anyway, what we do is like, oh, I go to uh, a politician. I'm like, look, if you don't join us, the ASL, mm -hmm. then basically we're going to make sure that you lose the next election. And so they forced their way through politics to these politicians wow. to get them to help out. They're like the early 20th century NRA. Exactly. There mm -hmm. we go. Actually, so, wasn't this law, wasn't it actually an amendment? 
It was an amendment, yes, yes. It's and, like a constitution. What I'm saying is that what they yeah, did is they made sure that they had the political power behind it to convince, basically, like, because when it gets to an amendment, you have to have so many, you know, states or governors it's join two in. Two thirds, exactly, yeah. Mm. So what they did is they made sure, made sure that all those pawns were in place. So when it came to that time, mm. and we've got all the politicians lined up. So mm. you mean to say, after a while, when they realized they were wrong, they were actually able to change the amendment? Exactly. <laughs> wow. You're spawning alert for the next one, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, that's fascinating. So there was all this sort, sort of public or like private slash public energy that was pushed in to yeah, private interest, yes. pushed, pushed prohibition through. Yes. And then at some point, and I mean, I assume we'll get to this in, the, in, in part two, in, in part two yeah, yeah. but at some point, either additional private interests yes. or possibly just the public at large said, we're up to here with this uh, gobbledygook. Exactly. And pushed it out. Interesting. Yeah. Now, the other major power, or the major group, was the Women's Christian Temperance Union, and their mm. movement was a little different. They were looking more for women's rights and also for safety at home. But what that happened was that the gentlemen would get off work, they'd go to the taverns, get drunk, come home, to be abusive, you know, right. or ne or neglecting their families, yeah. and so basically between the women and the church, they were basically that was their push to get women's rights, isn't that interesting? And safety in the, no. in, the in the home, right? No. no. Yeah, and so that was basically some cool facts about prohibition. We will obviously go more in depth into that in the next part, part two. Well, and also women weren't allowed to like drink Boats alone. Or they, well, no, 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 I know, but they also weren't allowed to go into a drinking establishment. Yeah, alone, so right? before prohibition, women were not allowed to go into yeah. bars. Yeah. Now, this is, we'll see in the part two, we talk about women, oh, women okay, were actually were allowed yeah. to go into bars during prohibition because of speakeasy bars. Uh, so yeah, it actually right. helped them to have prohibition have in a some little bit weird, warped way. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so some cool facts about Prohibition. And so, yeah, we'll talk about that next, all the more information about that in part two. And so let's tell everybody who we are. We are www.tikicentralcanada.ca. All one word. There you go. Or dot com. Dot com. Oh, there you go. Mark chipped in there. Here we go. Here we go. And uh, on that page, you will see Mark. Yes, Mark will be there. Mark's be Adventures. There. I am here. There you go. <laughs> Craig, I am here. I don't know. How many drinks have I had? We oh, are God, Legion. <laughs> Performing own union here. Here we go. And uh, so, yeah, Cam will be there. Cam's on there. Paula's on there. I'm on there. Some information about us. The episode information. The recipe information. We also do have an episode page. So all the episodes we've done. A recipe page of all the recipes we've done throughout the years. Years. It's, so, it's like a prison sentence. It sounds mm -hmm. like almost like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, jeez. Um, and then also, too, we do have a subscribe page. So please do subscribe. We don't have any, uh, if you notice, we have no commercials on our our, our, our show. But i got to admit, though, we, we've done a fine job. So the first year, we ended up with about 700 listeners, including my mom. <laughs> <laughs> ending, of, uh, ending of this, actually, December just went by. We are now 3,000 plus going towards 4,000 listeners internationally. Fantastic. So we're Fantastic. doing a good job. And uh, yeah. I would appreciate everybody that we've done. We're working with us. Uh, we've done an awesome job. Uh, well, we all done a good job. Thank and, you, thank yeah. you, listeners. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Yes, and so uh, I think we're gonna have to make some more drinks, and uh, I guess we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye. Aloha. Right, Tommy, spell Exotico. <laughs> Go. D X. <laughs> Can you yeah. use it in a sentence? I went to Exotico I yesterday. I got shit faced at Exotico. Exotico. <laughs>